Hi, I'm Dr. Derek Lee. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Hagit Bitashevsky. Now, Dr. Bitashevsky is a co-founder and teacher for Scoliosis and Spine Online Learning, SSOL. Uh, she's a BS PTS concept by Regal Physi Physical Therapist and teacher, uh, level two certified. Uh, she's also a scientific exercise approach to scoliosis physical therapist and McKenzie physical therapist as well. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Bedeshevsky is also a board member and chair of the education committee for SOSART. And she's the owner of two clinics, one in New York City known as Shroff NYC and an owner of a clinic in Israel called Good Posture International Center for Spinal Conditions and Posture as well. Uh, she specializes in scoliosis and spine rehabilitation for non-operative, pre-operative, and post-operative patients of all ages. Welcome. It's great of you to join us today. Thank you very much, Derek, for the opportunity. It's a pleasure. I'm ex really excited about today's uh, chat because uh, there's a lot of information you're going to cover for us as well. Uh, I'll just kick it off to you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about um, your journey into your field of speciality. Uh, with pleasure. I think uh, better I will share a little bit my screen. So really my journey and my passion and my what I'm doing all started around 2009. Uh, thankful to the person I will say that I, I think I'm one of the most luckiest girl, woman in the world to work with Dr. Buachi. Um, who is a spine, is, a, is an incredible person, first of all, but he is in, in the profession of scoliosis and spinal conditions. He, is a, he was a world leader, a president of the SRS, Scoliosis Research Society, for many years. And he worked at the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York City, where I started my career. Back in the days, in 2009, when I was a physical therapist at the HSS, he developed a foundation, focus, autofocus, where on a mission in two weeks, physical therapists and nurses and surgeons and other supports volunteered their time, went to South Africa, and as you can see here in the picture, also assessing for scoliosis in the most uh, valuable and simple way for everybody to check, I'm just taking you other play, a moment for other place. Everyone can check their child if they have scoliosis or asymmetry. And then the surgeons invited those who had severe scoliosis, as you can see here in the picture. This is just half of the picture. And they, they, in two weeks, they operated on 30, 40 children. And we, as the physical therapists, provided physical therapy for them right before the surgery and after the surgery. So I had a really lucky to go four times, donated my, my, my time and fly and meet these children with, as you can see, severe deformities from genetic, from an unknown origin, sometimes from tuberculosis disease. Uh, watching for Dr. Buachi and the other uh, surgeon assessment really being involved, work with these children right after the surgery, the day off and the day after to get them up, to create braces from nothing. And basically to guide them through, you know, starting a life with a better, a better, a better spine, a better uh, respiratory condition. So this is, um, this is my beginning. And I, I always say thank you for Dr. Buachi in every uh, opportunity I have. From there, I basically decided, or actually there, Dr. Buachi came with this yellow book that was written by Krista Leonard Schrott, as you can see here, the daughter of Katerina Schrott. And she, this book is, was the Bible of the Schrott therapy with all the explanation and it evolved over the years. And I decided that this scoliosis journey is really what I want to pursue and continue on the conservative way. And also to say that Dr. Buachi, 
said to me, said to us once, from every 10 patients that have scoliosis, I would like to operate on one and the nine others, I wish they will have some conservative help for their condition. And luckily there is, there is nowadays more and more advanced uh, conservative management and, and practice to help children with scoliosis uh, on different levels, which we're gonna talk about before bracing, with bracing, after bracing, before surgery, uh, right after the surgery and long term and, and in their adult life, there's a lot of conservative good guidance for patients. Uh, so I pursue, I learned the Schrott method in the Katerina Schrott Clinic in Germany, right after my trip to Ghana, which opened my eyes. I become certified in, in the Schrott method from the original school. I met with Krista, I visit her home, I exercise with her and her groupies in their 80s following her. And from there, I really evolved by finding Dr. Rigo in Sosot in 2011 in Spain and connected to his, uh, to his school and become his teacher and teacher in 2013. And from there, in 2021, I, me and my co-founder, Andrea, we decided that it is time for us to to open our own pathway. And uh, this is the scoliosis and spine online learning that uh, I'm teaching uh, now the, the short method through our school, but I'm forever grateful for all the people really that uh, I work with. So this is me and Andrea with this school of scoliosis and spine online learning a lot of free uh, presentation and some with a very discount just for people to understand more about scoliosis and the community. I taught about more than over 40 short courses around the world in China in Taiwan and in Europe and Israel. And I love, I really love helping both sides, the community of the patient and their families and also the therapist to understand the mechanics. After all, it's about the mechanics of scoliosis and how we can help. And if I may, these are really the most important people uh, in my career where I um, grew up in the field of scoliosis from the surgeons to the conservative management. That's quite the inspirational story because your journey you've been all over the world you've seen you've seen the worst and um, you've seen the best and the inspiration as well um, you decided to uh, start your own um, uh, clinic in New York City Schroth New York City as well uh, were you working with quite a few surgeons at that particular point as well and you were teaching too yes um, so I really started, my beginning was at HSS and mm -hmm. they, they are remarkable surgeons there, of course. I don't know if you want me to mention names or not. Sure, because uh, sure. you were there for 10 years as well, right? Right, uh, yes. right. So it started with Dr. Buachi, who is uh, the, the leader. He, people say, is a pioneer on the spine when he operates. And the, on the same floor, Office next to office is Dr. Cunningham Matthew, another brilliant, brilliant surgeon for scoliosis. Um, these were my main people while I was still working at HSS. But since I, I, I got involved in SOSOT, and while I was still there involved in SOSOT and meeting many surgeons from Yes, around the world, even you know, from Ahmed Alani in uh, in it in uh, Turkey to Rene Castellane in uh, the Netherlands, and uh, also I got involved in Columbia University, who decided to pursue the conservative management. Just to let you know, New York City in around two thousand nine was empty from, uh, from the teaching of the 
conservative management or PSCE. It was not, not known there. It was, yes, known in Wisconsin uh, due to partners who, who, who taught short method there. But New York City, uh, I, you know, I, I want to be humble, but I have to say thanks to HSS and these surgeons, they, we, we were the leader in New York City for the short method. Then I met also with, um, during my teaching of the Schrott method and being involved in SOSOT while I was working at HSS, I did meet Dr. Vitali, who is in my, he's, he's, he's an, again, another, really all these people are remarkable people, a surgeon who is willing to try and see rather than, um, let's say, more advocate for his for surgeries. And I had a lot of communication and patient share. And he took the, the short method because that was what I was offering. And I left HSS because I gave birth and I decided to pursue a, a, a new place. And we opened there a, a big clinic for, for scoliosis and spinal condition now runs by good friends of mine. And he's uh, he's uh, still in the in the leading of that that uh, surgeries and also therapy before and after in Columbia University Medical Center, along with Dr. Lenke. Everybody probably know Lenke from Lenke classification for scoliosis, from being the SRS president uh, not long ago. So I work with them and I still work and communicate with them very, very, very close. Again, thankful and lucky to, to have these people. And along my journey with the, meeting a lot of surgeons, Peter Newton, who was the one before the last president of the SRS, and the, uh, Lauren uh, Bayron, and a lot of other surgeons from around the US. So I think in the in the in the uplifting of the PSCC and in particular Schrott in the US for its evidence and for who most teaching the teachers are teaching Schrott in the US, uh, we 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 are really connected. So I think the, I think the world is coming to a good place of appreciating and understanding the effectiveness of physical therapy, scoliosis specific exercise, PSCC, if I didn't say it before, and the conservative management power to empower patients, not to replace surgery by no mean, but to go together. I agree as well. There, there has to be a bit of a spectrum of treatment from a conservative. Uh, you know, we, we wanna avoid surgery if possible for sure. Uh, Hagit, did you want to talk about uh, specifically your protocols and, and how you go about um, uh, assessing and uh, designing programs for, uh, uh, you know, pre-brace, in-brace, uh, post-brace, pre-surgical, post-surgical immediately and long-term as well? Even if um, for patients who haven't had surgery or not interested in surgery, uh, what alternatives you can recommend? There is the aspect of the assessment itself, which uh, what do we do as physical therapists to assess, let's say, for scoliosis, but I don't think I will touch on that. We want to talk more about uh, what, what is the protocol, like what do we give us in terms of exercises, okay, without the, the mechanical assessment. So I think it's probably somewhat also related to what are the goals and indication for, 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 for the conservative management? But let's talk about the age, okay? So designing a program for a, a, a juvenile is different than designing a program for adolescent or for adult. So the age is also dictating what is the protocol. A juvenile or a toddler will go about a more modified way. And in the modified way, we're thinking about elongation. I will, uh, is, is, is that uh, in the right track for you? 
Absolutely. So elongation, the uh, active traction, that type of thing. Right. So let's say for, for the juvenile, we do more activities of daily living because the child is very active and we can't really just stop someone and and give them an exercise program. Yes, of course, you, 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 the, the, the children also go to physical therapy, but, but PSCC, what we're doing, especially short, because this is my specialty, the short method, as people know, is more um, no movement really involved, more a, an isometric, which is exercises with stability, and the patient needs to know how to correct their body from inside. For that, you have to have the capability, which is all part of the assessment, the physical capability and the mind and the, and the energy for that. So we cannot ask a little boy to stand with two poles like these adults and spend about uh, five, seven, 10 minutes you know, maintaining the posture and doing all the, the three-dimensional correction of elongation, expansion, and derotation. These are the three components. You can understand that a five-year-old, a six-year-old is a little more difficult, even though there are some, ooh, okay. So we are trying to do things for these children that are more fun. This will be my, in terms of aging indication. Adolescents typically get the whole program in a very, the whole exercises, the short, for me, I also involve SEAS, which is a scientific exercise approach to scoliosis from the, from the Italian, which is more activity of daily living, which we'll get to it a little bit later, sports and recreation. But uh, adolescents can do the strict program and it is designed for them because this is the age where we are uh, approaching the peak of growth and we wanna catch the wind of opportunity before the spine is getting mature and then forces of gravity and eliminating gravity and changing the point of gravity will not have an effect when the spine is completely mature or less effect. So that's what the adolescent do. This is really our, uh, yeah. And the adult and elderly, the indication for exercises and what I will give them is a more also modified in a way that fits now their um, stiffness of the spine. And it doesn't mean that they are stiff. Not everyone is stiff. The stiffness of the spine means the maturity of the spine. So an adult, like you can see in this picture or elder, uh, that uh, living with scoliosis for 60 or 70 years, we have to be very uh, considerate of what and how much they can even elongate or, or, or move from side to side because the spine is already there for certain amount of years. It's like, a, you know, the Pisa building in Italy if people don't want to touch it, because if you will try to straighten it, you don't know what's going to happen. It can actually maybe suffer something. So also the spine of elders, we want to respect the condition of the back. Younger adults, they can do a little more and they can do almost like the adolescent, but also with the goals and expectation, what, what, what fits. So this is one assessment that I do, which is regarding really to age. My other assessment is about, is surgery is indicated or not indicated? And I go by that. If it's a mild scoliosis or adult or elderly, or there are comorbidities, then I will tailor the, the, the exercises a certain way. But if they are preoperative, to postoperative, it will be a different way. So it's a, I, I cannot come with a complete answer per person because everything all the time, Derek, as you know, is very individual. One of the indications or, or, or my assessment is 
is the patient refusing surgery and what's their level of athleticism? So here you can see a girl who have a 51 and 37 when she was diagnosed just like that. This is the first time of her diagnosis. And she is a high athlete. And she honestly went through, Derek, through, uh, let me see if it's here, through six, through six um, uh, second opinions, as we call them. Mm -hmm. And everyone wants to operate on her. Of course, she's 12 year old with 51 degree, but they decided or they met Again, I have to give this here to Dr. Vitali, uh, who are, I'm just giving it to him as, 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 as a pleasure and a friend and someone that, you know what, I admire surgeons who also say, yes, this is a operative, of course, but I know who you are. I know what you want. I know where you want to get. And if this is your life, let's try and see. And we met about, uh, we met uh, maybe a week after they met him and we tried conservative management right away with bracing. And you can see after four years, she was able to reduce from 51 to 35, not my measurement, is a surgeon measurement, from 37 to 17. Now it's 2021, she maintaining the same. I don't have a picture here, but uh, I, can, I can show you later. Uh, maintaining the same, you can see spine or trunk strength and also cob angle. So we are looking, of course, always about these two, even for me, more important is the posture rather than the cob angle, because she's a girl that continued, or young woman now in college, pursued her athletic career, got her, um, um, how do you call it? When they, they sponsor you for, for the college, they sponsored her because of her athleticism. Scholarship. Scholarship, exactly. And she stayed strong and happy. So she may, maybe in the future, she will want to do surgery. Maybe she will need to, maybe not. But to try and see, in my opinion, uh, it's almost never uh, too late uh, to do. So to give the opportunity, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. This is a very compliant girl and family, which is a whole talk by itself. Well, so this is, yeah. that's you a question I had for you, because uh, my son went through about a year of uh, Schrock and bracing as well, and uh, he was doing um, about 45, uh, minutes of exercises um, you have to have almost um, uh, superhuman that kind of motivation to want to do it because if you don't then my sense is that it's almost impossible to have a, a regular individual commit to exercises for years and years and years right um, so it takes a special individual to be able to to commit to that right uh, it's uh, it's interesting. I I find it um, in from my experience. I find it uh, one of course is is the family support, the family support and the devotion for that. And two, it's really right. It's that young girl or individual uh, who have strong minded, strong minded, strong emotion no no shame to go in public and, 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 and see and be happy to put the brace immediately after she win the medal. And also, and take it to her heart. I, 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 I don't have plenty of people like her, okay? It's a very, it's a strong-minded girl, yes. And you're right, you, you need, it's like, a, it's a magic powder that all the things come together mm -hmm. and, uh, and, 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 and a young girl can, can pursue such a, a, she always told me, Hagit, if there were 27 hours for bracing, because she was braced 23 hours, as the protocol said, she would wear it 24 mm seven. -hmm. She, right, when she got some, some sore, you can see here, like sore from the brace, she embraced it. They, they put, they medically treated it, 
but it never stopped her from and 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 to understand i i also want this for the community of the families and and the children to know that here i come from my heart even as a therapist to say that bracing compliance is number one for the, the for correction of the spine more than physical therapy even i say it as this is my job no i appreciate that for sure yeah again also assessing about what exercise to give what to do is about is, is the person the person is wearing bracing uh, or not or not wearing the bracing and we know that brace enhance the results there is a study and it was published and it won the 2017 so uh, award winner paper that they, they, they checked it with the short exercises, but short is part of, again, physical therapy, scoliosis specific exercises, PSCC. And when people are doing the exercises while they're wearing the brace, the combination is the best. So you need to, yeah, so I, I'm assessing what do they need in the brace and out of the brace. A prehabilitation, I am looking at the patient and checking what do I see that is missing in alignment and in balance because one leg is usually stronger than the other because of the past the scoliotic posture there is a lot uh, there are not a lot but there are malalignment also creating muscle differences right and left the stability what do the patient need what type of stability what about the respiration how do they breathe um, we know that if we don't guide them to breathe in a, no, they breathe normally during the day, you just breathe. But when you embrace and the brace is really opening, a uh, opening areas that usually the concavity, the collapse area, the braces allow them to stay open, especially the Rigoshanu type brace with the expansion rooms the breath go there and it becomes a corrective force. So we use it as well. And we teach the breathing, not maybe all day, but once you are in your corrective posture or your conscious posture, and once you learn to open some concavities, you breathe there and it supports the correction. And postoperative, what is left? We will go soon to postoperatively, but postoperatively, there is there we should not just i my opinion and of course the physical therapist opinion and also the surgeons i work with they know that the best will be a combination of pre and post operative physical therapy to get the best results for the patient so i'm looking what do i need to work on with that individual maybe also to talk about is Pain, is there pain and discomfort for the patient? So I need to touch on that when I creating the exercises. Uh, as I said, adults have some uh, um, degenerative changes, some normal degenerative changes that you and I, Derek, and all my community here in my village have. As we age, we have the degenerative changes. When you have scoliosis, you just need to a little bit pay attention. What is the direction of the correction that the therapist should give, and 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 respect our respect our spine. So I assess that via X-ray or or examination of the patient, see how they move. That's All right. Should should we kind of dive into some of the uh, exercises that you would recommend for those different levels? Okay. So we'll start may maybe with activity of daily living. Why? Because when, when you're playing the, 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 the violin or you play a flute or you, you play sports, but we'll go to sports in a moment, but on a daily basis and how you see it and today everybody's sitting more than we want them to sit because we know that sitting actually is eh, not the best for the spine. More compression is on the spine. You need to learn what to do. I think it's also very important, Derek, that uh, just to say that 
scoliosis, because we know there are collapses and prominences and different direction and some compensation curves above and below maybe the main curve and rotation involved, there are maybe some movements, some exercises, general exercises that are going to be maybe less advisable and also depends to whom I will talk about it, but some are less advisable and some are no problem at all. So I'm trying and I, I want my, my, my physical therapist also and the whole community, particularly Pilates, yoga instructors, fitness instructor for the population to, to know that we treat patient with spinal condition a little bit with, with more care and respect to their spine. So not all fits everyone. Respect what's going on, respect that there are different type of scoliosis. And that's also part of my assessment, what exercise to give you and how to modify it for you or even on a daily basis, your recreational activity. Also respect that adults, adults have a tendency for more, um, as we all with aging, coming down towards the ground. Gravity affects us. I wish we could live without gravity because then we will have less spinal conditions, but gravity, we have to turn this enemy to a friend. But right now we need to fight gravity in order to prevent other spinal conditions. So if I have, if I see someone who have round trunk and they are kyphotic, do I want to give them exercises that will bend their trunk forward, that will focus on flexion, flexion to who, who don't know the word is basically bending of the trunk, you know, trying to sit straight and reach? Probably not. So we will talk about that. And if we know that we have a, 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 a person, particularly, I just want to say, again, it's part of the assessment, but it's coming here into the exercise. When there is a lumbar curvature and lumbar curvatures tend, tend to progress more in adult life than thoracic because there is no really rib cage or structural support to the lumbar, and we relying on our core stability and elongation and fighting gravity. So we need to take care what exercise these people are doing that involve their lumbar curvature. Also to know and respect that PSCC, what we're doing as a, as a correction uh, of, the, of the scoliotic or kyphotic or spinal condition trunk is not what we're gonna do in sports and in recreation, okay? I'm not trying and I don't want when my patient is going to doing yoga, Pilates, fitness, sports, they cannot hold. And I want to be clear here for the community. We're not expecting, and I don't want the children or the adults to hold their trunk and, and perform like a robot. It's not life. When you go for your recreation and sport, be happy. Do it because you need it for your, your psychological and well-being and fitness well-being. But maybe after that, you go home and do some correction, some specific correction that we gave you. That's why it's a beauty to always seek help from a, when you have spinal condition, to have a short therapist in handy to give you some clue and then go back to your fitness life. Because three-dimensional exercises is not fitness and not sport, but it is your immediate corrective, okay? So it's good to do a little bit of that at home too. And why do we need to take care of, a, of the exercises and what I'm going to recommend? Because, and you can see it actually on YouTube for people who are not really seeking the, the evidence base for the exercises they choose, or even in therapy, just doing side bending like that when you have scoliosis or, and particularly progressive scoliosis, let's say, is not 
so advocate unless you know how to hold it and correct it. And we need to know, you know, yes, about the extension or the extension is the, 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 the backwards bending, who it fits and who maybe it's less fitting. Because after all, scoliosis, one of the, the initiative in terms of how it is formed is actually in the, in the, the spine is, is growing a little bit faster forward and giving this hypokyphotic posture. So maybe in a young age, a lot of, a, especially with a, a severe scoliosis, a lot of backwards bending is less recommended. And again, it's a maybe, it's a very individual, and I never want someone who is listening to this to say, okay, I cannot do that. No, maybe you don't have a severe scoliosis. We need to, you, you need to, you need to seek for advice, not just do in a group class everything. And if you look here, okay, this is like a, a forward bending, but take a look at this woman here that I'm showing with my cursor. You can see a little prominence on her right side. And we know that bending forward, bending forward is the whole mark, is the test for scoliosis because then we see the prominence coming. So maybe someone with scoliosis don't need to stay here for a minute and pushing the prominence to be you know, visible. Maybe someone look at this man here who is trying at the end, trying to reach his toes. Usually people try to reach their toes because they, were, they think that this is, this is what is this exercise about. And between you and me, Derek, it, this usually the attempt to do this asana stretch is to lengthen the hamstring, okay? It's not really to lengthen the back, it's to lengthen the hamstring. If it's to lengthen the hamstring, this is the wrong position because you are limited in the length of the hamstring by your back. And you can see here some backs, especially here and here, that they cannot really stretch the hamstring because the back is tight. So you need to lie on the back, have your back flat and lift the leg to stretch the hamstring. This is what you try to stretch, mobilize the leg. If you want to stretch the back, then you need to consider, not everyone needs to stretch their back. It doesn't fit all. So going to a group class sometimes is a little bit, you know, especially if you have spinal condition. And always take into account what is a good posture. I also want to come from a positive place because as a physical therapist, as a, as a, as a scoliosis specific therapist, I allow my teenagers to pursue their career in sport or to do sports, whatever they want. Uh, because again, this is for the wealth bin. This is what gives a, the mind and the body and the soul a place to shine. And we have Olympics medalist with, with scoliosis. This is their career. So of course they, 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 they treat it or they treated it and maybe they treat the scoliosis after, but you can pursue your sports with scoliosis. We also, I will touch base on that a little bit. There are some, if you are not to go into such an extreme of an Olympic and you do have a severe scoliosis, what is severe? More than 50 degree, 55 degree, when you are 11 and 12 year old, just going through the growth spur. And we know that if you have a 50 degree and you are uh, going through your growth spur, the scoliosis will progress. It's not, we cannot, you cannot hide it. It's a progressive scoliosis. Then according to SOSORT, we need to, we, we want to uh, limit a little bit the amount of twists and rotation and movement. But if this is your career, then you will continue and maybe take some time to do short exercise or any PSCC you do to stabilize the spine. Or maybe you will treat it later because this is, you are an Olympic 
in the Olympic pathway. But so our recommendation, social recommendation is to do sports, to do a, 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 a physical education in classes, to more sport, the better. A study published by uh, the Italian group showed that more hours of sports during the day, the, the patient have less progression, adolescent have less progression. So we are recommending all of that. And there is no study to show that sports actually uh, initiate or progress scoliosis. If you want, we'll go to that presentation later. It's a more detailed. But in general, the literature is that sports does not cause or progresses scoliosis. And the opposite, more hours in sports, any sports, because the study by Alexander Nagrini and Romano and the SEAS group in Italy, they, 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 they looked at all kinds of sports that they was involved. Because today, to be in, in reality, our children do maybe three different sports in a week, unless those who, who are going only one direction. But to, the study was done on like 700 children and children in schools that pursuing different sports during the week. Those with scoliosis before 25 degree or those even in braces beyond 25 degree, there were, there were two studies that they conducted. Both of them, more hours during the week, up to four hours of sports, okay, a, a, a week or a daily basis, the, more, the less progression of the scoliosis. So I call everybody, all the doctors we're calling, and it started from the, the, from the Italian, we're calling everybody not to, to advocate that swimming is the best for scoliosis or this sport or that sport or, sco or sport is not good at all. No, the more activity and sports and it's out of the brace typically, which is okay, the, the best for the, for the clients. In terms of the association between sports and spine deformities, uh, we know that it's still controversial, controversial. And there are a lot of study, which we will attach to this uh, interview, that uh, they telling us that there is no conclusion and correlation really between sports and scoliosis progression. And therefore, SOSOT came a uh, first time in 2011, but now in 2016, this is our latest guidelines for rehabilitation treatment of idiopathic scoliosis during the uh, growth, but this is for the adolescent. Our recommendation is that uh, sports is not prescribed as a treatment for idiopathic scoliosis, which still we meet doctors that tell patients, Go swimming, it's the best uh, for scoliosis. Uh, it's not the best, it's, it's a great way for cardiovascular and elongation, but it's not a way to exercise, to correct the spine if this is the goal, but it's a great sport. General sports activities should be performed for psychological, neuromotor and general organic well benefits. It is recommended that during all treatment phases, physical education at sport and at schools to be continued. Sports activities should be continued also during brace treatment because of the physical and psychological benefit of these activities. Recommended that during brace treatment, contact or highly dynamic sport activities are performed with caution because, and it's also our last recommendation, that competitive activities that greatly mobilize the spine, like the maze here you see, uh, are to avoid in patients with scoliosis at high risk of progression. Um, because high risk of progression, meaning it's typically with and severe scoliosis is about uh, more than 50 degree, and uh, not that we have a, 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 a vast studies to support, but all this instability may continue. And the, really the take home message is that 
we still don't know enough to made or to not make recommendations. Why do you think sports and activity is um, it's so helpful in terms of, um, well, at the very least, not, not causing it, but maybe, uh, you know, helping to slow it down? Excellent question, Derek. Let's go from the biomechanical aspect of it. Uh, there is a lot, even today, especially today, coming about scoliosis, first event. Is it just the bone getting scoliotic wedged or the disc maybe before the bone? So, or maybe both of them together. But anyway, there is a, also a... a a movable, a movable component into scoliosis. Let's say the disc, it's also an addition. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if it's that before, if it's in a small curve, you know, there are articles that when the scoliosis is mild, it's probably more the disc than the bone. And then when the disc get wedged, it presses on the bone. But let's say both of them come together and we don't know exactly what begins. There is also the component of the mast cells that hovering these spines and the muscles that hold us upright without, without, without muscles around the spine, you can hold the spine and it will fall right or left or front or back. So the muscles are holding somewhat the spine and the instability of the spine. So, when you are active, when you are doing sport, and I don't, not, doesn't matter the sport, your muscles are on constant, the concavity is stretching and the muscles are holding it up. And the convexity maybe is contracting and opening from the concave side. And also the brain maybe, you know, the neuromuscular, it get calibrated in terms of uh, right and left and front and back muscular calibration. After all, uh, as Bowell uh, noted in 2009 and then later in all his studies that um, it's a, it, there is a neuroosseous component to scoliosis. Neuroosseous meaning the, at the end, what makes the wedging of the disc or the vertebra is signals coming from the brain asynchronously in a not synchronized way to the right and left and front and back. So the nerve system, we don't know what causing all of that to come. We don't know as idiopathic, but we know the pathway. This we know. So from hormonal and uh, autonomic nerve system and central nerve system and the nerve at the end, what grows the spine and the disc and the muscle, everything coming from the nerve system. So maybe when you're doing activities, it's like uh, you are awakening somehow both sides. Yep. And maybe it's, uh, you know, trying to get as much range of motion within those, um those stiffer, uh, well, the, um, the curve apex um, will be helpful as well. But what happens with, uh, you know, if you're doing a variety of sports, I think that's a really uh, good idea because you're getting different ranges, different flexibilities, different contractions. What if your dominant sport is you're only into one sport and that sport might be an asymmetric sport, maybe you're throwing, maybe it's tennis, maybe it's golf, right? or if it's um, more extensions, because as you know, it's um, with, with RASO, relative anterior spinal overgrowth, the front of the spine starts to lengthen, whether it's the disc or the vertebrae or both. And so do this gymnastics or dance where you're doing those repeated mov movements. Is there a difference between doing one sport and doing multiple sports? So I, I cannot answer because generally, in general, I always like to, in my mind, even if I don't say it out to you, everything in our mind is, and yours too, immediately refer to what you know, literature-based. Research-based. So, 
literature based, right? So I don't, there is no evidence, I don't have an evidence that a certain sport, and they looked, I think, at golf and tennis, and the, there is no, there is no correlation between one-sided sport and idiopathic scoliosis or progression. There is no studies about it making a progression. Unfortunately, not unfortunately, unfortunately, there's no study. Or oh, maybe fortunately, there is no study, but uh, it, it didn't show. There is no. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and particularly also to know it will not initiate scoliosis. This is very important that the community will know scoliosis is a scoliosis before it becomes scoliosis, Dr. Rigo used to say. It's a very powerful statement, meaning a, nothing, a, not nothing, if there is a tumor or a surgery or something that they iatrogenically makes, makes scoliosis, yes, but not sport and recreation and activity cannot, or poor pasture, it cannot really cause scoliosis if you don't have the gene to scoliosis. So the gene to scoliosis is in the statement, scoliosis is a scoliosis before it's be, it, it becomes a scoliosis. That we see, the, the word becomes scoliosis is what we see. But before, it's there. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the there, if you don't have the genetic to it, and you don't have the predisposition, the, 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 in, in the body, the factors that we are not completely know what they are. But if you don't have them, you can play golf you can be tiger tiger woods yes and you don't have scoliosis and you can be federer and you will not have scoliosis from tennis because it is not going to happen right absolutely and uh, because anecdotally you, you probably have patients that um, even are doing not even just sports but if they're doing fitness and they're doing, um, you know, exercises maybe a little bit incorrectly for them. You know, you highlighted the hamstring stretches that individuals are doing. Um, so I have patients who are saying that, you know, ever since I started doing my fitness, over, you know, two years ago, it seems my curve is getting worse and they're adults, that type of thing. So I think we need to put together a study. <laughs> okay. So one for sure. But now you mentioned something interesting, Derek. The, there is a differentiation between adult with scoliosis and adolescent. So all I said until you mentioned and, and say this now was adolescent. Mm -hmm. And adolescent, and, and, and yes, unfortunately, really, it's, it's aging and gravity that makes the difference between adolescent with sports and adult with sports. Adult, like all of us, as, as I said before, we are, we are prone for, for changes in our spine. When you have scoliosis, particularly scoliosis in the lumbar spine, because it's very rarely that people get some listesis, and for the community, listesis meaning a little bit degeneration or movement of vertebra on top of the other vertebra causing some asymmetry in adulthood life um, that we all develop. Eh? It's a, um, a, this is a spine of an adult here, okay? From the side though. But if you're losing a lit, if you're losing your lumbar low doses as an adult, and then, uh, and which we all do, and then if you have also scoliosis, then you can, you can maybe start to see a little bit that maybe the vertebrae are not completely uh, in line with each other. And some bone spurs, Derek, are coming here on the side. And bone spurs you see here coming here on the side. What are these bone spurs? These bone spurs, Derek, are uh, the body way to make stability on the spine. So adolescent, we have a brace, we, we bring it to exercises, we can make the change, and there is no development of the body to create stability. 
here, especially people who didn't exercise and didn't do anything for the scoliosis because it was not popular. And now at age 60, 70 or 50, you know, not everyone, but if you start to see these changes and that's where a physical therapist, I'm looking at, at every x-ray. And this is again, part of your first question about assessment. I must look at the adult spine to check what is going on, Derek, in every vertebra in relation to the other. And adults, we all, even without scoliosis, and I'm saying it all the time because I want people to know that it's not just because of the scoliosis. We all have degenerative changes. Not everything's symptomatic. And, but with respect to that with scoliosis and the body try to create stability by, by, by bringing the bones together. But these bone spurs here, pressing Derek a little bit on sometimes on the nerves that exiting and coming to the legs. And if, if we try, if, if these people go to an exercise and do rotation, and do side bending. Imagine side bending, let's say here to the right side and compressing more the bones on the nerve. Or side bending here to the left side and compressing L5, L4 on L5 and creating a crush here more on the nerve that exit here with not a lot of space. So here, Yes, I think it's important that the adult will listen, listen and listen to a, a specialist, listen to the body. And some movements, Derek, are less recommended for adults with scoliosis, with degenerative changes, particularly in the lumbar. And, uh, and, and this, it, this is, this is a, um, it's almost like I want to say it's a present to teach an adult what is good for you and what is not good for you to, yes, eliminate pain because they're going to a general class of yoga, doing twist and turn and staying in the turn and, and this listesis or what we see here become grinding, you grinding your compression on the nerve. This is for when you have degenerative scoliosis, but what happens when you are looking at a patient who's um, already hit their growth spurt and is no longer growing and they're a late adolescent or a young adult and they don't have any degenerative changes as yet? Do you have okay. any recommendations for sports and sure. exercise? Like that? Sure. So let's go in 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 few direction okay i think it will be it will be interested and it will answer all a uh, fitness when you have scoliosis let's start with this that not everyone is a fit for the short and just do the short plus people want to do recreation and sports as you said for happiness and research does not say that exercise make your scoliosis worse as this for sure taking care of the young adult or the adult that don't have pain or the adult that used to do yoga and pilates for years and they are strong and they can continue so here i also usually do an assessment who are you are you a young adult even 30 40 50 who are strong do you did exercises and fitness and you you kept your scoliosis um strong your body strong with the scoliosis you you kept your body strong with the scoliosis it's there but it's not you and you can pursue and do a lot of things usually i say you know what you can you can continue your yoga and pilates and if you don't have pain and you are strong and you good body uh, awareness continue honestly do what you want to do you started to feel whatever you feel, eh, discomfort, eh, aging, eh, I'm less practicing now. Come, let's try to revise your exercise. If not, continue. My goals are your goals. We need to find a way to get you back to being able to do everything that you want to do. But maybe with you a, a new a, a attention to your body 
and what is better for you. I do say yes to yoga and weight and personal trainer and cycling and runner and all of that. And patient wants that and I'm happy to provide it. And, but there are also some, you know, even this young adult, I want them to know the biomechanics of scoliosis. They, I want them to know because maybe we don't meet again. Maybe I move place, you move place, you forgot about me. Maybe yeah. I want you to know that there are certain, you know, certain things of the mechanics of scoliosis to be aware if something starts to feel unright, just seek help again. Other than that, everyone to live a normal life. You know, uh, Wendy Welm, she is now in their 47 or maybe I'm, I'm not sure how old, uh, but she was a ballerina with scoliosis in the lumbar, like the most, uh, um, a kind of a prone for instability is the lumbar and she pursued her career and now she's in her 40s and she continued to choreograph and to and to dance and doing great but taking care of her scoliosis and being aware so no and also Maya please please I don't know how to say it properly from the bolero unfortunately she doesn't live anymore with us but you know, they continue, but they are strong and they are aware of their body. Here you see a young adult, she's, um, she's a short therapist, okay? She's my friend, she's from NYU. She's a, an excellent a, a, a physical therapist and personnel. And this is what she did since she was 16 with scoliosis that almost didn't change the degrees. She, this is her sport. She is a, a body, not body builder. A ah, great yeah. ah, she knows the biomechanics yeah. of scoliosis. So she knows how to hold herself and she does shop as well. And okay, she does all that. kind of fitness. Nice. Okay, so I want to go into the exercises. And, uh, and listen, let's say all these extensions, exercises. I'm not saying that people, uh, young adult cannot go and pursue, but always go also in uh, the different directions and they uh, try to stabilize the spine even when you go. Um, if you don't have pain and you're a good mover and you can hold your spine stable, looking at side bending and rotations and something that is less than neutral position. You know, it's very individual. So I cannot open and say, everybody should do that. If you, if you, if you feel something, maybe you need to back up a little bit from the amount of rotation and side bending and try to find a lot and there are a lot of positioning that we teach in courses that in neutral spine involving all the equipment of Pilates, as you can see here, and also of yoga that are keeping your body in more neutral spine. So it, it seems that uh, you're recommending generally, I know it's, depending on the individual that if you have the ability to maintain a neutral spine, you can kind of do whatever you want to do, but, sure. right. But in reality, most individuals, um, uh, are quite sedentary these, these days. Um, and even if they're in brace, uh, it's very difficult to maintain core strength sometimes because of, uh, uh just being the number of hours. Right. So are there general, um, so for instance, a lot of, there's a lot of controversy regarding, you know, side planks, for instance. Oh, it's open for everyone. Right. Yeah. And I assume that planking side planks are great if you can maintain a neutral spine, but what, what happens with individuals who are just trying to get into that type of protocol and just don't have the strength, is it a matter of just uh, building up strength over time. And of course you have to talk to someone who knows what they're doing. Do you have any recommendations on that? Sure, you break it into parts mm -hmm. and 
every exercise, side plank, which, okay, the controversy about side planks, if you want me to touch base on that, sure. was where a study came out from uh, Colombia that side plank can correct a scoliosis, okay? It was a, like that. A, or, 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 or not correct, maybe reduce, reduce in, a, in, a, in major degrees. A, regarding the study, there is a lot of controversies and was not a good study. I, I have no, a, no problem to say it because it was not a good study in the way it was done. Uh, you know the method. It, it's it's not it's not good enough for us in terms of a publication and acceptance and following up and la la la. A uh, side planks are great, great exercises for sure for stability of the whole body. Honestly, uh, Derek, not just the core, the whole body. I am I am a a, a plank. Mm, guru, I love planks in all directions more than any other abdominal work. Because in plank, you facilitate from the, 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 the tip of your fingers to the top of your head and your ears can also work and, and, and the toes. I can show you in a second here if you want, I can, uh, I can, I can talk about it while I'm doing uh, something. But you can break every exercise into component and do it with less gravity and with less fancy things. Side plank, because it puts the body when one curve is down and one curve is up, you should do it actually on both sides for fitness and, for fitness and strength. And with every side, the side that the convexity the round side of the curve, doesn't matter lumbar or thoracic, is down towards the ground. That's the side that, that works against gravity. And that's the side that, that really works in this exercise. And it can be no matter what side, because you always have some compensation above and below. So the person needs to do side plank. I'll, 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 I think it's, you will appreciate. Sure. We can talk about it in a second. Okay. That's when you're doing an interview with a physical therapist. <laughs> no, this is great. I love it. Right. Okay. So when you go, let's say you go even to a modified, sorry, I have the, the light there. Even when you do some modified side plank, okay? Or on the knee. Mm -hmm. And I have here, let's say a lumbar convex towards the ground. Now this side, I am contracting the bottom I'm opening, I'm stretching, if you want to call it stretching, it's not really stretching, it's an expansion of the, of the concavity, holding stability, what you do with the finger and the arm and the shoulders and the neck, and if you want to lift the leg, and everything is working. And of course, if you come to do a plank like that, so I guide, what I do, I guide a lot of things, but right now, it's the lumbar, let's say, if it was the convex down to the ground. And you're working on it and you're expanding it. But there's a lot of modified way that people can do. The important is to keep the uh, rectangle shape of the trunk and not to fall down and not to go too up, which people do that mistakes as well. So plank is about being square. And if I had a thoracic concavity, then I will go to the opposite way, let's say, okay? Now, now the convexity of the thoracic is down 
and I can open here the concavity of the thoracic. I can still maintain the concavity of the lumbar that is coming to the ground now. If you want, I can paint my scoliosis now with right thoracic and left lumbar, let's say. So right now, for the lumbar, it's not the best side. But for the thoracic, that is the convex side down, now the muscle here work against gravity and they open here. So on that side, always put the convex side of the curve you want to um, activate down. So here it's for the thoracic. And I will focus on expanding the muscles here without becoming a banana. Now for, for Hagit, for individuals yes. who, uh, maybe since you're doing a little bit of demo, what happens with uh, planking, if you're gonna do uh, traditional planks for you know, kyphosis or hypokyphosis? Very good. <laughs> Derek, you are smart. Right. Why? Because um, with kyphosis, the plank is a little bit of a challenge. Side plank for hyperkyphosis is magnificent. Because in side plank, and I, I'll go to a plank. Okay. Side plank, let me just take this. Side plank, let's say I'll go to the maximum or whatever. You are opening, you expanding, oh, sorry, close the hip, you expanding the thoracic region. This is the whole mark of correcting kyphosis. It's actually from expansion side to side, and then the spine go forward. We can talk about it in a, in, a, in a particular presentation once. So side planks are great. What's happened when you come to a regular plank? It's a good question. In a regular plank, when the arms are a little bit, let's say, close to each other. And most people either go up like that, or sinks down with the, with the lumbar. So this is very important to find the right place, not up and not down. And what do they do with the thoracic region? So here, the importance is not to drop the head and push the ground and the spine up, but to bring, to take the shoulders and to bring them down, towards your armpit. And that means that all the muscles of the erector spine is pulling down and then also expand whatever they can do to expand side to side while they are in this position. So it, it, it's, it's a movement, it's a teaching, the side to side expansion. This is for kyphosis, hypokyphosis. Kyphosis, hypokyphosis. Okay, so both a similar technique for both because you're trying to reduce the strain on the thoracic spine. Right. Okay, we. Okay, thank you for the demo. I need to work out more. No, I'm sure you're good. To summarize about, uh, let's say, fitness. One, it's divide, really the recommendation, it divides into adolescent and adult. And when adult, maybe in the adolescent group will be the young adult who are same strength and everything like adolescent, but also not all adolescents are strong. But let's say we allow them to do whatever they want, be move, pursue your sports career, and no evidence that it makes it worse. The opposite, just evidence, and people can read that it actually supports muscularly the stability of the spine. When you are an adult, you have some things you need to consider. 
Do you have a lumbar curve? What, how do your lumbar curve look like? It is, there, it, it is one of Dr. Schwab, Frank Schwab uh, modifiers for how to pursue about fitness and, uh, and, and, and about surgery, not yes or no. Most people with lumbar as an adult went to seek surgery rather than people with thoracic. And he came out with these four modifiers. One of them is lumbar curvature. If you have lumbar curvature and you have, you know, other things that go along with that, you need to be more care about how you exercise. What do you do in your fitness life? And, uh, and then consider, you know, do you have pain? Do you have disability a little bit, uh, dysfunction? And then protect, protect with less, less, less instability moment of your spine when you are an elder, adult and elderly, particularly with lumbar, because after all, scoliosis is an instability of the spine. Aggie, thank you so much for uh, taking the time today to go through so much information on the, on the physical therapy um, approach to uh, scoliosis. Uh, really appreciate your time. Learned a lot. Thank you so much for the demo. It's a pleasure. And we'll definitely have to uh, uh, schedule some interviews in the future so we can uh, basically focus on the specific segments of your knowledge base. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye for now.